Hey guys, welcome to episode 6 of our weekly Super Smash Bros. Ultimate News Roundup, which means there's only 20 episodes left to go until the game's launch. As usual, we're joined by Derek, Ash, and John to go over all the updates from the Smash Bros. blog and elsewhere from the past week. So let's get right to it. And by that, I mean let me quickly explain, if I sound different, it's because I'm recording this from Texas from my parents' new house, and if you hear random Breath of the Wild sounds in the background, that's just my dad playing the game because he's obsessed with it. So, <laughs> with that out of the way, let's get to the first day of the week being Sunday, uh, where we got a character overview for Pichu, uh, and a brand new description that reads, Pichu is back after 17 years. Pichu's electric attacks have greater range and do more damage than its other attack types, but they also damage Pichu. So, yeah, Pichu is back, guys, which is kind of wild, because I really think of every character in Smash, this is the one I expect to do at least to ever come back, and yet here he is. <laughs> um, so, Derek, as one of the big Pokemon guys here, although I think pretty much everyone is besides me at this point, um, what do you think <laughs> about Pichu being back? Yeah, I it, it's it's really wild, because here's the funny thing, is like people went nuts for Snake. I think the reaction, from what I could tell from the like reaction videos I watched online, was even bigger for Pichu, because as you said... <laughs> Nobody expected Pichu to come back. You hear everyone is you expect you hear everyone is here and you think, okay, everybody but Pichu because well, Pichu <laughs> damages himself. Uh, it's it's really dumb. Here's the thing that gets me. He was a chill character, right? Exactly. Yeah. Here's the thing that gets me and like, oh my god, seventeen years. I did That's not I realize say. it's been seventeen years since Melee. It uh, hurt. I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna be honest. It hurt reading that a little bit because yeah, my God. Yeah. <laughs> well, it hurt the first time too because they said that about Young Link as well when we got that character overview and it right. just it, it stabbed like a knife. I'm like, 17 years? Are you kidding me? I remember playing Smash Brothers Melee at E3 when it was announced back in 2001, and somehow saying the year doesn't feel that bad, but reading <laughs> how many years it's been since then, like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> I remember that too, and it's like, it, I agree, it's weird. When you say the year, and it, you think back, oh, it, it hasn't been that long, but when you yeah. read it, it's like, oh my god. <laughs> But what's kind of cool though is despite how uh, despite how simple of a design Pichu is, even with it being 17 years, you can see the updates to him that they've done in Smash Brothers Ultimate, where it looks like he's reflecting the more you know his more recent appearances in the Pokemon games. His dimensions have changed a little bit. He's just received like a level of refinement uh, beyond what he did then. Not to even speak of any balancing changes they may have had done to him as well. Like I'm really curious to see what it feels like to go back to Pichu after all these years. But I don't I don't think I've even but I played Melee since then. But I don't think I even bothered with Pichu much even back in the day. <laughs> so I'm really curious to see what he feels like these days. Yeah, no, I never played Pichu much either. And, I mean, given that Pichu is pretty much the Dan of Smash Brothers, I mean, you, that's like, Pichu is the one character you don't want to get bodied by. Because, I mean, mm -hmm. it damages itself. That's the whole, that's Pichu's whole thing, is that it <laughs> literally damages itself. <laughs> now, we, we don't know for sure, uh, because we don't, you know, have official documentation on the mechanics, but... Uh, I believe Smash Ultimate is bringing the Rage mechanic back, which could, in a weird roundabout way, kind of give Pichu a buff, but also not in a way, because, you know, Rage, the way Rage works in Smash 4, is the more damage you take, the stronger you become. So mm -hmm. Pichu can, in a way, kind of make itself stronger at the risk of also making it even easier to launch than it already is. That would be a wild mechanic. All of a sudden, like, Pichu, if you're good enough could be one of the best characters in the game, kind of having that Lucario mechanic and just like, but he's able to actually damage himself, which is really weird to think about, and we'll see what comes of that. But honestly, the thing that just attracts me the most to Pichu throughout the, these entire trailers, what they've shown off of him so far, he is one of the most expressive characters in this game. Yeah. Yeah, we see that in his, uh, what appears to be a new taunt of his, where he gets dizzy and his eyes turn into those uh, spiral things. Yeah. Uh -huh. I actually played Pichu quite a lot in Melee, because it's kind of fun um, winning with, with the worst character in the game. And when I played with friends, because I was, I was quite a bit more experienced than them, I kind of played Pichu as like a handicap. And um, I think that's, that's quite a fun way to get around playing with more casual players. But yeah, one of the things that Derek said earlier is if Pichu becomes one of the best characters in the game, like top tier, that would be hilarious. <laughs> I mean, having him as like, the, as like the best competitive character, that would just be brilliant. <laughs> that would be amazing. Yeah. <laughs> now, I hope that happens now, actually. I'll be disappointed. And I believe, too, at least going by the Smash Wiki, we've seen at least one new ability that Pichu's gained that he didn't have in Malay, being the ability to crawl. Which I find hilarious, because is he not short enough already? Does he need to go any shorter? <laughs> he's just mastering the limbo since he's been in limbo for 17 years. 
Uh, that's oh. a nice one. <laughs> I, yeah, I can actually, it's funny, as a Mega Man main, I can actually see this being an annoying matchup just because I think Pichu probably is too short to be hit by a Mega Man's lemons. So any character that's too short to be hit by pellets is really obnoxious. I gotta to get with. good with so, Pichu. <laughs> I, gotta get, I can yeah. see Pichu being, like, annoying. Pichu might be the odd job of this game. Right? It's true. <laughs> That'd be amazing. I think it's funny if if you looking at the way like, Pichu's character model in Melee and uh, in an Ultimate, it's just comparing the two. Obviously, the shading and and everything looks better, obviously in Ultimate. But it is funny just because of Pichu's overall simplistic design, how much it also hasn't changed. Like Pichu obviously looks way better, but also looks very similar too. Absolutely, and <laughs> it got a brand new final final smash. Well, kinda, <laughs> <laughs> kinda. It looks to be just Volt Tackle again, but that's what we see in Pichu's overview trailer, so I don't know if it's a different move, but it's probably just, you know, a zippier version. It seems to be Volt Tackle. What I'm curious yeah. about is if it damages, if it still damages him. <laughs> oh, that would be hilarious. Be brilliant. <laughs> oh my god, he's just taking damage the entire time. He's doing the the whole time. Smash. What if he just gets, what if he gets instantly KO'd once his final smash wraps up? <laughs> oh god. Oh man, like Jigglypuff style, like getting a shield broken? Yeah. <laughs> oh man, that would be really yeah. You know, I un, un, would not be surprised if Pichu's version of Volt Tackle actually did damage it. Maybe like a can twenty five thirty percent damage. That I think it would has surprise to. me. Yeah, I, I, I think it has to. Mm. Yeah, and if it has the rage mechanic, that's just a, like it just powers you up even more, kinda. <laughs> Right. I think we just made Pichu a much better character than he probably will be. <laughs> I mean, the, the funny thing about Pikachu or about Pichu is the fact that, like, I, I still don't think I'll, I'll use him at all, but I'm so glad he's back. I'm just glad he's there. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, it's just nice to see, again, everyone back, even if I, yeah, I don't plan on using Pichu all that often, but it's just great seeing every single face in this roster. Absolutely. So let's go ahead and move on to Monday, being day two, where we get a stage overview for Moray Towers. Uh, the description reads, This is a stage from the Splatoon and Splatoon 2 games. Look closely for Judd and Little Judd. Judd will raise a flag with the color of the fighter or team color currently in the lead. And we get a couple of pictures of it, even though we've already seen it in action multiple times because it was playable at E3 and we played it ourselves. However, we didn't get a chance to play it in the night setting, which we can tell is in the game from the picture here, which I uh, apparently I think was also in the E3, tr E3 trailer, but I had forgotten about. So that's awesome. And do we know how that's selectable? Like, can you just choose that? Or is it based on time of day? Or is it somehow synced to the Splatfest from Splatoon 2, which would be kind that of amazing. Would be very cool. <laughs> Wouldn't that be cool? <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure. I, I'm not sure how they have it handled whatsoever, but you might be able to select it or some form or another. I could kind of see that. It is kind of funny that we were always talking about how they'll probably go for, you know, the Inkopolis Square or Inkopolis Plaza. Uh, one of those and to represent Splatoon, not an actual level. And no, they went with Moray Towers, which I personally like, but... I know a lot of people, this is their least favorite stage in Splatoon, so... Yeah, Moray Towers is a weird one, because you're right, I don't think it's one anyone saw coming, but based on my playtime at, at uh, E3, I really liked how it worked, because it felt very distinct from any other Smash stage. Like, I don't, I don't think I played a Smash stage that felt anything quite like this, with its multi-layered ramps and extremely vertical design, and also I think the Splatoon aesthetic really helped uh, lend that different feeling to it, too. Yeah. I, I kind of find myself wondering if maybe it's just tied to your Switch's internal clock. Kind of like, uh, I think, didn't one of the Animal Crossing stages? I know if you play it on Saturday night on Smashville, you'd get, like, you know, K.K. Slider playing in the background, you'd get some special music. So I wonder if the day or night that you, you know, the version of the stage you get is just based on what time of day you're playing. Looking at the wiki, it appears that will be the case, Ash. And in addition to that, too, I forgot about this during E3, but at the end of a match, it will, uh, like in Splatoon, or in the final 30 seconds of a match, the song will change to indicate, you know, the final 30 seconds of right. the round, which is super nice. cool. Like, so I love whenever they do those tiny touches like that that you wouldn't expect, but really do capture the feel of the, of the base game. What I like is if it were um, in Coppolis Square, it would literally just be a, a floating platform with in <laughs> Square in the background, whereas as as it is now, it's like the platforms actually do resemble Moray Towers. Like, this is exactly right. what the stage looks like, mm -hmm. and that's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. When we played it at E3, I actually had a lot of difficulty with those ramps. I kept finding myself going down them when I, did, when I didn't intend to, and it just really threw me off. So I think there is a bit of a learning curve with this stage as well. I don't know how long of a learning curve, but enough. Well, it's just the, it's thematically accurate, uh, Derek, because going down is the easy part. Finding your way back up is a tough <laughs> part, so... <laughs> 
It kind of almost reminds me of like a narrower, kind of slightly different take on the Wrecking Crew stage because it's so <laughs> vertical in nature. And I don't know, it's funny because it's not necessarily, it has not so far been my favorite stage to play on, much like Moray Towers in the actual Splatoon. But for that reason and just because, I, I just kind of a feeling I have, I'm going to make a semi-bull prediction and say that I don't think this is the only Splatoon stage that we're going to get. I think there's another one. It'll, probably two. Yeah, I agree with that. Splatoon's too big only to have well, one stage. Right, I think with how prominent the character Inkling is, particularly than being the first revealed character for the game, period. Uh, yeah. I think there's a really good chance we'll get at least one more Splatoon stage, and possibly a Splatoon 2 stage. Yeah, exactly. I just Splatoon is such a it's it's, it's an A-lister Nintendo series now. There's no way it debuts with only one stage, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Yeah. Right. There there has to be a way for them to put Pearl and Marina in. Yeah, we have the assist trophy with Callie Marie. They're gonna find a way to put Pearl Mar Pearl and Marina in there. There has yeah, to be. I mean, it could be a DLC stage too, perhaps. I mean, we all know True. because they they did begin development of this game quite a few years ago or you know a few years ago now so they may not have had access to what they were doing in Splatoon 2 but I can absolutely see DLC coming for this yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. absolutely one of the detail I love uh, as they said in the description how you have Judd and Little Judd there who hold a flag up for the winning fighter that is such a good another like just really so good, good. yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> great stuff one thing I kind of want to see um, a bit more of though is kind of player messages in the game like maybe just something like ripped from Splatoon 2, like just sort of put those in the stage somewhere. Oh, that would be a great idea. Please. <laughs> right, cause there's, there's such a huge element of Splatoon. In any way we can get the specter of the Miiverse stage back, I am all for it. <laughs> please, 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 yes, make nice. that happen. Yes. Because even the um, the Mario Kart 8 stage based on Splatoon kind of hinted at that, that they had graffiti around the stage too. Not, unfortunately, not player created graffiti, but at least it hit, you know, it tied into the fact that Splatoon did have that. So maybe they could do something similar here. I hope so. I would be all for that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right, well, let's go ahead and move on to Tuesday, being day three, where we got a brand new music track, this time from Metal Gear Solid 3, uh, being Snake Eater. And I believe this is the third Snake Eater track to come to the series. Of course, the first one since Smash Brothers Brawl. And, I mean, I think they could add any Snake Eater track, and there's nothing they could do that wouldn't make me love it. I, I, loved, I love the music in the game, period. The remix I just heard here sounds fantastic, and I just can't wait to play an actual match to this track. They've somehow made uh, a James Bond-inspired track sound even more Bond than ever. <laughs> like, I know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but it, it just sounds great, though. One thing I would have liked a bit more of is for this to be recorded with live instruments, because it sounds maybe a little bit cheaper than some mm -hmm. of the other arrangements we've had from Smash, but still, it is just a brilliant arrangement of Snake Eater. Yeah, yeah I, I kind of agree with you, John. It, there's a slight element to it that it just, yeah, it, like, I guess cheapness is maybe going too far, but there's a slight element to it that I, I know exactly what you mean, and as much as I do like this arrangement, and I do, the original is so good that I just, I understand why they probably either can't get the rights or don't want to pay the licensing fees, I get it, but God, the original song is so fantastic that I would love to be able to play to that. So I do like this rearrangement, but oh man, I want the original so badly. Mm -hmm. As much as I love the original and I, I, like you, I would love to have the actual sung version, the vocal version in the game as well. It's pretty obvious that's just not going to happen, but this yeah. is so much better than just the Snake Eater arrangement background music that we had in the original game. This has this is might be one of my favorites that they've shown off so far. This is just a really good arrangement. Got me really pump, pumped up for it, and oh god, I can't wait to hear it more in the context of actually playing the game. Do you think there's a chance I might get a new Metal Gear Solid based arena? Perhaps one based on Metal Gear Solid 3? I, I hope so. Right? I would love that. Oh, what if they had a stage based on the chase scene with a mech? With oh, the oh, right, with the, the Shagahod. So I was just thinking that, having the Shagahod like, attack right? you from the back. Oh, and like having e uh, uh, Eva and Snake like riding on the motorcycle. And, oh, that would be so cool. Yeah, so what could the what could the platform be that you're on? What if you're in a really big sidecar of the motorcycle that's a platform? <laughs> <laughs> I, I would just oh, assume the Shagahod itself. <laughs> this kind of makes sense, too, because um, the only two Metal Gear Solid games recently on Nintendo platforms were the Twin Snakes and their Metal Gear Solid 3D on 3DS. Right. So this just makes so much sense. <laughs> yeah, it does. I, I would love if we had like a, a stage based on Groznygrad, which is uh, the, the fortress run by Volgan toward the end of the game. And you know uh -huh. that boss fight with Colonel Volgan, he electrifies the floor. So Ooh. you could even have Volgan as a stage hazard just in the background oh, using his arms so to electrify the floor and you have to like, wa you know, avoid that. That would be so cool. Uh, I'm loving all of this. I want it. Yeah. Ugh. We need an MGS3 stage, period. That's just, yeah. It has to happen. Absolutely. I, I, I will say one other thing uh, about 
uh, snake that we didn't we can't bring up anymore since uh, we already had his character spotlight. I didn't think about this. You know, they all they have to do is just pop an eye patch on him, and all of a sudden we have playable Naked Snake slash Big Boss. Big Boss, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's really all they have to do. I mean, I also hope now with I mean now I mean now the Abraham Naked Snake. I mean, I hope there's actually just a Naked Snake costume, given the fact we have Naked Link, we have Naked Mario, we have Naked <laughs> Shulk, we need naked, a true Naked Snake here. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> All right. On that note, let's move on to another update on Tuesday, being a stage overview for Wily Castle. The description reads, Hazards from the previous game for both Nintendo 3DS and Wii U will appear on this stage. The Yellow Devil will cause a big explosion when it's defeated, but the player who landed the final attack doesn't take any damage. Use this to your advantage. So I love the fact that for the description, they are focusing on literally the worst element of this stage. Yeah, the thing yeah. Almost universally hated being the Yellow Devil. My thoughts exactly. Right? What I do like, though, is I do like how they're bringing back the hazards from both versions of the game on 3DS and Wii U. So now, Ash, you're obviously obviously a big Mega Man guy. I'm sure that also extends to the stage. Do you know if that means the hazards appear at the same time, or does it like uh, is it random between which version of the hazards you're getting? No, I think what it means is that it's going to shift between platform arrangements from both the 3DS and Wii U versions, which had their own specific versions of the stage that had their own exclusive platform variations. So during so the I match, think all, they all will change. Yeah, I think I think basically what it means is that yeah, like during during any match in Wily Castle, you'll get different arrangements of platforms, but those right. arrangements would be different between Wii U and 3DS. So I think all that means is that the possible arrangements of platforms Got that the it. stage can pull from are now from both versions. But what I'm really hoping is that you the, the whatever the hazard toggle is is separate from that so I can get rid of that damn yellow devil but still have my cool platform arrangements and things like that. Mm -hmm. These platform arrangements, they I can't remember. Did, they, did they, those moving platforms appear in the Wii U version? Because I can't remember them. I think they were exclusive to the 3DS version. You know, I don't know for sure because here's the problem. Like, I, I mean, yes, obviously I'm a huge Mega Man fan and I want to like this stage, but Wily Castle actually ended up being one of my least favorite stages in the game because of the yellow devil. And so whenever I do play Wily Castle, <laughs> it's on Omega mode because so I don't actually know all the different platform variations because I don't ever play <laughs> the non-Omega version of Wily Castle. Like, yeah. why would I want to? Like, I hope I never have to use that to my advantage about Yellow Devil because I never want to play with him on the stage. <laughs> the hazard toggle was made for this stage. I mean, I'm really looking forward to the hazard toggle uh, blog entry so we can discuss that in depth. <laughs> this is, I, they, should, they should have announced it officially in this blog entry, actually. <laughs> yeah, By the way, you can yeah. turn off Yellow Devil, which literally everyone in the world will do. And like I actually just played, uh, I just played some Smash Ultimate at uh, Nintendo's San Diego Comic Con media event, and I played some matches on Wily Castle, and it's the same problem. Like I want to love that stage, mm -hmm. but it's too small for the Yellow Devil to be on it. Like it, he literally takes up too much of the stage to make it easy to fight. So. Yeah, I mean, I, I never got the argument that Ridley was too big. Yellow Devil's too big for Smash Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> Completely agree. And yeah, so I really do hope there's a way to play with all these different platform setups without the Yellow Devil, you know, messing things up. Right. For sure. All right, well, let's go ahead and move on to Wednesday, being day four. We've got character overview for Bowser Jr. The junior clown car this little fellow rides in takes less damage when attacked than Bowser Jr. himself. So try to stay in the car when taking damage. The different color variations are the Koopalings. So yeah, so we get Bowser Jr. and the Koopalings back, which I think is the best part about Bowser Jr. Because I've never been a big fan of Bowser Jr. himself, so I always play <laughs> the Koopalings whenever I can. However, I do love how they incorporated him and the Koopalings into the game in the clown car which is something I would have never expected and really uh, really lends a unique dynamic to the game, particularly with the fact that it is probably the closest I'll ever get to, uh, to a playable Stun Race FX vehicle character. <laughs> 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 because he is basically a car in this game. So yeah, I mean, it's, it's cool to see him back, particularly with all the Koopalings here. Um, I don't think there have been any like super notable changes to him that I've noticed. His moveset appears to be the same. Although there is one interesting difference I was reading on, on the Smash Wiki. Assuming it's accurate, I haven't been able to verify it myself. But apparently in Smash Brothers 4, when you used his cannon move, where he shoots out a cannonball, he could only have one on screen at a time, I believe, whereas now it appears he can fire more than one. So he can fire, he, had, he just has to wait a little bit of time before firing another, and he can get another one out there, I believe. Oh, interesting, yeah, because the rate of fire on the cannonball was actually quite, yeah, it was very low, and I think he could only have one on screen, but it also could be very strong, so right. if you can have multiple now, I wonder if they if they scaled back the damage that it does a little bit, um, just to balance it out a little bit? I'd hope so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I would I would think at that point. Honestly, I Bowser Jr., at least, or the Koopalings, if we're going to go that way, ended up being one of my favorite <laughs> fighters in Wii U, because I my favorite Koopaling is Iggy, so I always change to Iggy. Playing as, let's just say, the Koopa Clown Car is a lot of fun. I lo loved it, and you can really throw people off with 
sending out the uh, Mecha Koopas or or those cannonballs. You just stand to the side and you will catch somebody off guard almost invariably. It's 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 a lot of fun. So great to see him back and no major changes really, but. That's not a bad thing in my in my mind. I didn't really like playing against Bowser Juniors in Smash 4, <laughs> honestly. I, I always found them a little bit annoying. And uh, maybe that's just Bowser Jr. in general, because he's kind of annoying <laughs> Mario Tennis Aces, too. <laughs> well, was it, well, on that topic, too, his final smash in um, Super Smash Bros. 4 was so freaking annoying with yeah. uh, Mario painting the giant X on the screen, which actually uh-huh. is a notable change this time, because now, uh, going by my rough second count, it only appears on screen for four seconds now versus, I believe, 12 in Smash Brothers 4. Oh, so that is so much better because that final smash is yeah. so annoying to deal with. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that's kind of, you know, stays in keeping with the, the overall focus on making final smashes punchier, faster, and just getting everyone back to the action more quickly. Right. Mm-hmm. One thing I've always loved about Bowser Jr. personally is that the clown car is absolute screenshot gold, especially you know, especially <laughs> with certain moves. Like you know, I think one of them uh, brings out like a fork. He stabs you with a fork. I think that's the forward tilt, and I think his down tilt is uh, the t- like the tongue comes out and it's like a licking attack, and that right. s- especially is screenshot gold. So <laughs> I, I expect to see many more funny Bowser Jr. slash Koopaling screenshots in Smash Ultimate. <laughs> yeah, especially with the uh, with the Twitter being tied directly into the console now, you're gonna see a lot of screenshots. Oh, oh god, oh, I didn't yeah. think about that. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, um, although that was the end of the blog updates for the day, uh, we did get some more news from Sakurai himself via another Famitsu column in which he gave a few new details, or actually not details about the game, but more about the development or really specifically the um, announcement of the game at E3, where he discussed uh, all like how in-depth Nintendo went this year in preventing leaks to the extent that they didn't even publish, I believe, printed any printed materials, but they didn't want those getting out anywhere. I mean, even Nintendo employees were surprised when the game was like fully revealed at E3, because even they didn't know what was going on with it. <laughs> so apparently you could hear like, cheers erupting from other employees when, uh, when that happened, so... <laughs> So that's pretty cool. Beyond that, he also reiterated the fact how, with this being the ultimate version of Smash, he doesn't know how they'll quite top this in future games, uh, and how we may not ever get a roster this big in the future. And kind of like tied to that with how much work goes into the whole process of bringing back all these characters and all these stages, he's lost 13 pounds so far working on this game. (laughs) Um, Which apparently he threw out there as being a good thing, but that still sounds horrible to me. (laughs) (laughs) He's like, I'm fine, I'm fine. Yeah, I mean, he does reassure fans in the interview that, you know, like, he's okay. He's like, he's yeah, I've dropped about six kilos, but I, I wouldn't say I'm emaciated. I've just slimmed down. So he says right. there's no need to worry. But, you know, given given uh, Sakurai's penchant for putting his health at risk to work on these games, I, I, I'm not sure I completely believe him. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he, he talked about, like, the reason he's so focused on this version of Ultimate is that, you know, he can't go at this intense intensity forever. So he needs, you know, he wants to put everything he has at the, in the moment, which is why he's not really worrying about the fact that, well, I can't get to this amount of characters. I can't do the whole surprise of everyone is here again for the next game. So we're just going to worry about the now and not worry about what the next game is going to be until we get to that point, uh, which I think is an interesting design strategy and probably a good one. I think it just makes for a stronger title and he can focus and decide who would, who to keep, who not to keep and maybe get in more fresh faces, maybe do a uh, Street Fighter 3 type thing. Uh, where yeah. They just like toss out yeah. everybody and only keep the bare essentials. Like get our original 8 and that's it. <laughs> I mean, so I, I know Ash is going to freak out with you just saying that. I love that idea. <laughs> oh, I, I already know you like that idea. <laughs> maybe, I I mean, maybe, maybe, not, maybe, maybe not just, just 8, but I absolutely love the idea of going back to basics, reinventing everything we think we know about Smash. Particularly with, as you know, as Sakurai himself is touching on, with as you also just touched on, Derek, with this being the ultimate version of Smash, I kind of feel like you just have to go back to basics for the next one. You know, reinvent what Smash could be. Because what else, do you, what else can you do beyond just adding more and more and more to it? I think there is a ceiling. This might be that ceiling. So I love the idea of going back and just reinventing, you know, rethinking everything that Smash could be. See, there's no right. ceiling until we have a three-digit character count. There's oh no ceiling. God. We have to we have to hit at least a hundred. <laughs> oh Sakurai's gonna die under your watch. I hope you right. that. Hey, I, I don't. I don't. If someone else has to pay to, to you know take up the mantle and continue adding characters, I understand. But I'm just saying, let's just keep building on top. Let's just make it Super Smash Brothers Mugen. I, that I want. That is exactly what I want. No, I get it. I mean, what Sakurai's saying here does make sense. Where do you go from here? I do like that he says he's focusing on the now and not the later. But it right. is true. This is the ultimate version. Where 
we're, you know, by the end of, of everything, we're probably going to have cracked 70 characters. I mean, really, where do you go from here, especially after bringing everyone back, which probably isn't possible again. Mm -hmm. So I do know what you're saying. I don't love the idea of going back to basics with, you know, like a 12-character roster, but I do get his point here, absolutely. One funny thing about the um, preventing leaks part is the game actually did leak, and just no one believed it. <laughs> like, there's, there's a 4chan post that uh, was posted like a few days before the announcement, and all the comments just say, fake, fake. Because <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 it doesn't sound real. Like, everybody's back. I think um, one of their bullet points was even Pichu. And I think that just went, everyone just went, nope, no way. Yeah. So it actually, it did leak, just, yeah, no one cared. <laughs> I have seen that come up a few times. Yeah, some, some people in the comments of our own video were like, well, it did leak. But yeah, it, there were so many leaks going around, and this one had no proof, as I recall. There was no pictures, no evidence at all of anything. Leaks in quotes are a dime a dozen on 4chan. And yeah, we've seen them come true before, but oftentimes it's been with some evidence, and this one had none. So I think that's also right. why no one bought it. You know, it just kind of slipped in there with all the other leaks. So, <laughs> Which means their strategy of not printing any materials for it worked. Because this guy had exactly. no proof, he couldn't say it was like nobody believed him that it was real. Right. Right. So there you have it. From now on, if there's no proof, that means it's real. <laughs> exactly. So Goku is in. <laughs> Hell yeah, Goku. My favorite part of this interview is the fact that Sakurai doesn't even try to mince words anymore when it comes to leakers. Like, he just throws so much shade. And this is like a direct <laughs> quote. I really didn't want for this thing we've been working on for years to be ruined by someone's petty sense of self-satisfaction. <laughs> That's just, he could not, he's just throwing shade at this point. And I don't blame him after the way Smash 4 was leaked and, and all that. I mean it must be the most frustrating thing to have to deal with when you're working on the project. So I just love that he's just, now screw leakers. I do think, yeah, I think it actually would have been, in this case, really damaging, damaging to the game had anyone taken that leak seriously with everyone being back leaking. Just because I think, had we known that confidently going in, the reveal for, like, you know, because they did a really drawn-out reveal of all these characters, and I thought that worked. Because it was, like, it tied into the whole surprise aspect and how, like, with Snake being back, that's when they fully announced, hey, everyone's back. And then they went into the in-depth details of, of that. I think the reception of it would have been far weaker had we known that going in. So I think in this case it was extremely beneficial to, beneficial to Smash that we didn't know that everyone was back. But I think everyone would have gone tired of that reveal uh, far sooner, or, you know, or period, rather. People would have gone tired yeah. of it going into it had we known that. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Definitely. As as a um, as a huge Xenoblade fan, the ESRB leaking Shulk in Smash Four completely took any expectation away from his actual reveal trailer because that that leaked like two weeks before the reveal. So when he was officially announced, it just felt like old news, and right. you know that that uh, you, you don't want to feel that about one of your favorite characters. So yeah, leaks can be very harmful. Mm -hmm. John, I don't know what you're talking about. Shulk was never revealed. He's just a Photoshop oh, little, little Mac. Mac. It's just. Little <laughs> <Mac>. <laughs> <laughs> Well, let's go ahead and move on to the final day of the week, Thursday, day five, where we got a po a new Pokeball Pokemon being Beware, which, by the way, I love that name. That is a fantastic <laughs> name. The description reads, Beware is more ferocious than it looks, with slow movement speed offset by very powerful attacks. Now, John, you actually did a whole video for us where you compiled all the known Pokemon in the game. I believe there's 28 of them. And I took a look at the Beware segment where we can see Beware, sure enough, walking quite slowly through the stage. But when he connects with a fighter, <laughs> it is powerful. He does like this massive uppercut. It's saying them careening upward toward the screen, um, which I love already, by the way. So what do you guys think of uh, Beware being here? I think it's a great choice. He is a very recognizable Pokemon. He is also one of like the key Pokemon of the anime. Oh, is he? Oh yeah, he's the new way uh, Team Rocket gets uh, taken away from the action every episode now. He just picks them up and carries them off because he's like become like their <laughs> care caretaker. And it's ridiculous what he does because they have him like running on water essentially to catch them when they're randomly about to blast <laughs> off. Like they're all excited about actually blasting off in an episode. And I, I believe Beware like parachutes out of a plane or something like that, grabs him out of midair and just starts running the other direction to prevent them from doing that because he's that much of a caretaker. Beware is an awesome and hilarious Pokemon. And I love how they really captured just how strong he is in this. Like, the, the, even the Pokedex entry is, Trainers must be careful because it lo loves to get, give hugs, but it doesn't know its own strength, so it's been known to crush its trainers. Wow. <laughs> Which is yet another one of those really, really exceedingly dark Pokedex entries. It's just surprising when you take that, you know, when you set that against the happy-go-lucky Pokemon universe otherwise. 
I love it. <laughs> I, I kind of do wish, I didn't know that that was Beware's role in the anime. I kind of wish now that given that I know that, I wish he was just like a Pokemon that would do kind of like a Kirby side type thing or, or a Bowser or a DK type thing where he just gra grabs a fighter and just runs off the stage and tries suicide with them. I think that would be <laughs> hilarious, hilarious given the way <laughs> given the way he works in the anime. That is true. <laughs> it's like somebody gets launched and then like he just grabs him and pile drives him in off the side. Yeah, just just run just you carry you can carry him over his head and then just runs off the stage. That's it. <laughs> I'd love that. He, uh, he seems to stick around longer than a lot of other Pokémon too. Like in, in all the treehouse footage, he's around for maybe like I don't know, like 15, 20 seconds. Whereas a lot of Pokemon just kind of do their move and then go. Right. So this guy's just sort of charging around the stage, just punching everyone. And because he moves so slowly, you're just it, it, like, it changes the whole dynamic of where you're positioning and fighting. So it's, it's a very clever Pokemon. I mean, he's just staying true to his name. He's got to beware of this guy. So that brings us to the end of the week for Smash Blog updates. But we're not done yet because we have to answer our Patreon question where once a week for uh, just $1 a month. We'll ask one of your guys' questions. So uh, this one comes to us from Dude91 who asks, Hey Game Explain, first keep up the good work, especially the discussions. My question is a simple one. As I'm a little concerned over the lack of new fighters so far, how many new ones do you think we will get? And are there any specific characters you want to see, especially considering they uh, could have used new mechanics? I root for Paper Mario because I believe he could have a really unique moveset with him using partners and, and playing maybe fighting with color and his hammer from the newer games. Thanks for answering my question. So yeah, I mean, that's a big question, guys, and we kind of already touched on it a little bit earlier, but how many more newcomers do you think we're going to get? We know of two so far, um, three if you count Daisy, but as we've covered before, she doesn't count as anything. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, how many more? How many new characters are we going to get before the game launches, do you think? My, my expectations are pretty low for this. Um, this. This feels like, you know, it's the ultimate version of Smash Brothers, so they're bringing back everyone they can, and all the newcomers at the moment, besides Daisy, are pretty much, well, Ridley is one that's like fans have wanted since, since the very beginning, and then Inkling's pretty much Nintendo's most popular new character. Right. So they feel like just like a, a, a last effort to get an all star cast in this game. And I'm not sure how many other characters are like that, so I, I really don't expect very many at all. So maybe a couple more Echo characters, seeing as they're putting a whole new categorization for those. But besides that, I think maybe as little as maybe four newcomers. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm thinking too. I think I think we're probably going to end up with maybe around 70-ish characters. I think they'll just barely break the 70 barrier, and then that's probably it. So I'm thinking anywhere from like four to six newcomers. So maybe maybe we'll end up with 69, possibly. But I kind of think it's going to hover around the 70-ish mark. But I don't expect too many beyond that. Like I don't expect another Smash Four situation where we're like, oh, we'll get you know probably six to eight new newcomers, and we end up getting like a billion. Like I do think <laughs> it is going to be fairly fairly conservative, and that makes sense. They're they're bringing everybody back. I mean, they already have their work cut out for them, balancing a, a roster of sixty five characters. And Sakurai already did kind of uh, set the expectation to uh, to not expect nearly as many characters as in the past. Honestly, I'm only expecting probably two more brand new characters, maybe three, but and I'm talking brand new characters. I don't know which ones they'll be, but I don't think that you know we'll get that many brand new characters. However, I do think we'll see a sizable amount of Echo Fighters. We only have three so far, and that's weird to have this whole new uh, label for them and only have three examples. Right. I, I feel like we're going to get at least five different Echo, five more Echo Fighters, I think. Because there's some that are just ready made to have an Echo Fighter made for them. Like we talked about Jean for Bayonetta and, and Shadow, Sh for, Shadow Sonic. for Sonic and Proto Man for Mega Man, potentially. You know, stuff like that. Like there's some really easy replacements that they could make to give the Echo Fighter one difference, but still keep them the same otherwise. I, I do think we'll see plenty of. A good bit of Echo Fighters, but only maybe two more brand new fighters, which is fine with me. Yeah, the Echo Fighters kind of complicates things a little bit, because before, that wasn't really a factor we consciously thought about when predicting roster sizes. Like, I mean, I guess clones were always a factor, but something we didn't really think about. But now with them making Echo Fighters a big thing, it's something we are taking into consideration now. It's like, how does that factor into the character account? Um, so, for instance, even with uh, Smash 4, what, at least two of those characters were would, were Echo Fighters, right? I think even, yeah, because Lucina and Dark Pit, right? Were there yeah, any others? right, so two of them. All the others are labeled as their own original characters, so the only right. clones right. that are considered Echo Fighters now are Lucina and uh, Dark Pit. 
Yeah, even Dr. Mario isn't considered an Echo Fighter, even though he was, in, you know, included in that clone corner in Smash 4's <laughs> roster in the ordering. So it's kind of kind of strange how they're, you know, retroactively saying, oh, no, Dr. Mario isn't an Echo Fighter. Right. So with the roster being 65 characters right now, I think, I'm going to throw it out there, I think we'll get at least five entirely new characters. Even, I mean, I think that would still come in less than, than Smash 4, while not being ridiculous. So I think that'll bring us up to 70, and then I think we'll get by more of them as well. So I think we'll get at least... 10 new characters in some form coming to this game. Hmm. Yeah, I think as it, as it is though, like the roster is kind of packed with all-star characters and I'm not really sure who else they can add at this point. <laughs> and I, I feel like the ball's kind of in Microsoft's court to bring in some of maybe their characters because they own some of the biggest icons in gaming like Banjo-Kazooie's one, which a lot of fans want. And then there's also Steve from Minecraft, who I, I know is ridiculous as a choice, but he is one of the most popular characters ever. So I feel like those two are possible choices. And Nintendo and Microsoft are really close at the moment, so I feel like it's possible. I could see Banjo-Kazooie especially, I mean, it sounds weird to say because the fact that this is even a possibility, but I love the fact that we can talk about this. And I could see Banjo-Kazooie especially if, if uh, Microsoft is planning some kind of comeback for them in the future. So, you know, this would be a good way to get Banjo-Kazooie on people's minds and then reinvent that series or, you know, introduce a sequel to that game or maybe the next Xbox or whatever. And and even though it didn't happen in E3, I, I would still be willing to put money down on the fact that there's going to be a Castlevania character. I really do think we're going to get Simon oh, yeah. Belmont revealed at some point. Yeah, so I no think doubt. he's probably a shoe in I mean, of course, we don't know that, but come on, it seems very That's likely. been a heavily so. rumored character, too. And plus, Konami are back. I mean, they're in Ash's dishwasher. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they've done so Bun Man. <laughs> I need to watch that uh, video. You tweeted that video, right, Ash? Yeah, I tweeted. You should definitely. Well, yeah, so for those of you who don't know what John's talking about, my dishwasher, or, or my wife and I, a dishwasher in our apartment, when it runs, it sounds like there's a portal to Silent Hill and in our dishwasher. And I'm like, well, this doesn't sound good at all. Like, you could literally <laughs> record that ambience from my apartment while the dishwasher's running and use that in a soundtrack for a new Silent Hill game. It's actually kind of terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> Pyramid Head, next character, got it. Yeah, I mean, there it, you go. I mean, he appeared in Bomberman. Why not? They they, they can make him kid friendly. <laughs> That's true. I would I would love to see a Pyramid Head assist trophy right alongside Bomberman. That would be hilarious. Oh my god, <laughs> That'd be pretty great. I mean, we could we could see it for hours. Yeah, saying whether characters we want to come to the game. All right, yeah, that's Andre, sure. Gino, yep. is he going to make it in since we have Cloud? <laughs> oh my since that's god, that's another you know one what? that's been demanded I, if a if lot. This is the ultimate version of Smash. This is the time. I'm going to say he is. I'm going to say he's back. Maybe that's why he pulled, they pulled them from the or pulled him from the Mario and Luigi Superstar remake as a cameo, <laughs> just to further build the hype. So it would throw everyone off the trail. He's happening. He already got a costume in Smash Wii U. Hell yeah, I'm going on Gino. I want Gino here. I'm going to say it's going to happen. If they announce him, the internet's going to go freaking nuts over this guy to the point where I almost totally swore. Like, that's how nuts <laughs> <laughs> So. Gino would be really, really cool. I, I I hope it happens for his fans, and I would be happy about that too. If it does happen, though, I hope he comes alongside a Mallow assist trophy because Mallow deserves some love too. Nobody loves mm. Mallow. I love Mallow, but nobody, everyone talks about Gino, and he's really cool. But come on, give Mallow some love. Mallow too. would just cry the entire time and flood the stage. Hey, that'd be a great assist trophy. <laughs> he's just above the stage crying tears. That would be actually really cool if he went to a certain point in the stage, <laughs> started crying, and actually pushed you away, kind of like Mario's flood. Right, that would be it. awesome. Yep. <laughs> yeah. <pretty> great. <laughs> All right, guys. Any other quick characters you want to get in there? I'm just sort of waiting to be surprised. Yep. Same here. I mean, I, I mean, and that's a thing. Like, if there are more characters, which there better be, they're going to start announcing them soon because December isn't that far away. I just said what 20 weeks at the start of this discussion. So they got to start cranking out some, some. You know, they got to start announcing some more of these characters, right? So here's hoping for another Nintendo Direct coming up soon, perhaps, where they can get one of those out there. Yeah, I mean, it, it does feel like August would be the right time for a, you know, midsummer 
post E3 Direct. Right. So, especially given the fact that the E3 Direct itself really only focused on Smash and a small handful of other titles. So it really does make sense to me to have a direct time around August where they can talk about things that, you know, obviously, yeah, announce an another newcomer, but not just talk about Smash. Like, talk about a newcomer and then talk about all this other stuff they've got that they didn't have time to talk about in the E3 Direct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's going to be a Direct for sure. I mean, we still don't know when Dark Souls is, for instance, which is meant to be really soon. And also, um, in July of 2016 and 2017, we had the NES and Super Nintendo Classic Systems uh, announced. So, if we're going by that pattern, it sounds like there may be another mini system coming very soon as well. So, I expect to direct very soon. I hope you're right, John. Yep, exactly. Yeah. I mean, hey, if it's an N64 classic, that would be a perfect tie-in to a Banjo-Kazooie announcement. Oh, my oh, G. <laughs> Imagine if they got that, and also were able to, because of that partnership as well, they were able to put Banjo-Kazooie and Tui into the N64 classic. That'd be so good. That I mean, would be amazing. You kind of have to, right? Like, Rare was so central, so yeah. essential to the Nintendo 64. Like, you kind of need them there. So, yeah, but the thing is, time's running out on that classic console announcement. They always announced the previous ones, like, around this time of year, if not earlier. So, yeah, here's hoping, that, that, because that would be amazing. So, thank you so much for the question, Dude91. Again, you want to submit your own questions, you can just back us on Patreon for just $1 a month. You also get early access to our Game Explained Real Talk podcast, as well as to our VIP room, our VIP lounge, on our Discord. And that brings us to the end of our discussion. So thank you so much for watching. And if you liked our discussion, make sure to like and follow us on Facebook and Twitter. You can find links to those in the description below. It's a good way to keep updated on everything we post. And of course, stay tuned for tons more on Smash Ultimate, including next week's discussion. So we'll catch you later. Bye.